Hi everybody, it's Molly. So people were asking about a consistency video, which I already did a tutorial about thin and thick paints for flip cups and ring pours, but um, I'll do another one. I just wanna say first that this is your own science. You have got to experiment and find your own way. I am not gonna be able to tell you exactly what to do because everybody uses different paints and everybody uses different pouring mediums. So depending on what pouring medium you're using, depending on if there's glue, depending on if you're just using Floetrol, um, depending on if you've got Liquitex pouring medium, and depending on the brand of paint. So that's the first thing I'm gonna show you. This is gonna be probably a longer video, but I'm gonna go through and do a couple pours as well and show you the difference. So if you guys stick around, um, I'll try to go through as much as possible in about 20 or 30 minutes. So I have a little list here. This is just my little cheat sheet for people, but this is not the end all be all. You guys play around with your own consistencies. Figure it out. That is the beauty of this art. I cannot explain it to you to the fullest. I can give you something to work off of. A ton of other artists out there have shared their pouring mediums, their consistencies. They show you in the cup. Watch all of that. Soak all of that information up and try to make it into your own. Play around with it. Learn from your fails. I don't really like to call them fails, actually. Um, you know, learn from the experience that you've had and keep moving forward. Um, so for, these are, these are not, this is not an all-inclusive list, but for a dirty pour, play around with it. You can use any consistency. Let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit. You don't need the top yet. So for a dirty pour, any consistency, play around with thick to thin, you'll get different effects. For a flip cup, I like to personally go thicker, um, because, and I'll show you what thicker is, um, but because that allows me to manipulate the paint and create smaller cells to stretch them into larger cells. And for my flip cup, I normally use um, a little bit of glue in that mixture because it helps hold the cells better. For my ring pours, if I'm going for a beautiful ring pour like Gina DeLuca where all the cells are popping up in it, um, I use a thinner paint. If I'm going with my type of ring pour that I'm trying to get a 3D shape out of it or I really want the lines to hold, I go with a much thicker consistency. For a density pour, you want it to be thin. Um, some people use just paint and water. When you start getting over about 30% water in your mixture, the pigments start to bind to break down and your binders don't hold. So if you're going to be using that, my personal recommendation, and I am not, you know, I did not go to school for art, um, but my personal recommendation is to try to add either some pouring medium, some Floetrol, something in there um, to help bind the paint. Really, I recommend Liquitex pouring medium or some GAC 800, something to help an artist, you know, created for acrylic binder to help um, keep the densities of the paint together, especially if you're selling your pictures. Um, for a balloon smash, thick or thin, it's up to you. Um, you could do either. For a blow dryer, it's normally thinner because you want the paints to move across each other, to mix together a little bit. That's what's gonna create the cells without silicone. A string pull, I personally like a thinner base on the um, coat and then a thicker or a thinner, depending on what you're going for, on the string color. And that is because um, the when you pull the color through, if your paint on the bottom is super thick, then it won't. It'll the colors will just kind of seep down in there, um, and you're you'll kind of lose your design. For a puddle pour, can be thick or thin. So all of these, you guys, can be really any consistency. Um, back to the balloon smash for a second, and I might do a video, video on this later this week, um, but I personally like to paint my canvas with a color or have it dry a little bit before I do my balloon smash um, if I'm going for that type of kind of pronounced circle on there. If I'm not, if I want the colors to kind of muddle together, mix together, then I'll do a thicker base coat 
or a wash coat on the bottom and then I'll pour my colors and do the balloon smash. So there's tons of different techniques to do a balloon smash as well. So things that matter, like I said, the pouring medium, the type of paint, and I'll go over that in just a second. The pigment of the paint. Paints that are like, you know, deco art. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Like deco art um, or apple barrel. These are thin paints. And the pigment I've noticed is, deco art's actually pretty good, but the pigment in apple barrel is, um, is very, let me zoom out a little bit. The pigment in apple barrel is, um, is lacking <laughs> for choice of better word. Um, then you start getting into the student and artist acrylics. And so artist loft holds its pigment pretty well and is a much thicker paint. Creative Inspirations is what I normally use. I get it at Jerry's Artorama. That's, I think, their proprietary brand. I can't really focus in here. Let me see if I can autofocus. There we go. Um, so the Creative Inspirations is another one um, that I use that's really creamy. So I'll put those out and I'll show you on there. Okay, let me make sure my autofocus is going good. Great. Okay, so... Um, the pigment of the paint, like I said, um, and as you get into, you know, your Windsor Newtons, into your Goldens, those pigments are super rich. They're highly densely pigmented. So those are going to hold a lot better, and you may be able to use more pouring medium, less paint, um, and, and get a similar effect. So whether you're using high flow versus a thicker paint will also matter. And then for muddiness, the way the colors are layered is important so how you pour them in the cup whether you're pouring them down the side of the cup or whether you are you know dirty pouring from up high and then the way you pour them out also matters so all of these things matter there is a lot going on okay so I have my pouring medium on my channel it was one of my first videos you guys excuse my hair in that one I just rewatched it a little bit ago Oof, scary um, but so what I normally do is I start out, let me see if I can get a color here for you. I, I start out with all my paint kind of thick, like this, okay? And then depending on what I'm gonna do, I change it to, I add more pouring medium, I add more water, add more Liquitex pouring medium, whatever I'm using, I add more to change that. But do you see here, this is what I mean. This is probably about the thickest I'll go. But do you see how that's kind of globby and sitting on the top there? That's what I mean by that thickest paint there. And that is just me mixing one part paint to one part of my pouring medium. Okay? And as you add more pouring medium, you're going to thin this out more. Okay? So I always start with my one part, one part. And then I add more pouring medium and then a little bit of water to get the consistency I need. So that's what I mean by that. Um, something else you have to think about that it's not always true um, is sometimes the colors react different. So your metallic colors, uh, depending on which paint brand you're using, sometimes come out a little bit um, thinner, just out of the bottle a little bit thinner. So then those, you're going to have to thicken those up a little bit, you know, use... Um, Sometimes that's difficult to do. If you're using glue in your mixture, it's actually pretty easy because you can just add a little bit, you know, add more pouring medium to it. Um, but for the most part, you know, your pouring medium, so I'll show you my pouring medium, how the consistency of that. So here's just a little bit of my pouring medium. And if you can see, oops, just kidding. You can see that's pretty, it goes straight back into the cup, doesn't sit anywhere, you know? So that is pretty thin, right? So that's my pouring medium, but some people's pouring medium is a little bit thicker, just depends. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna move this out of the way now. So. All of these things are important for all of these pores, okay? Take a screenshot of that if you want. 
And while I'm doing reminders, if you guys like my channel, please subscribe. Um, if you want to help me out with all these tutorials and all the cost of the paints, I have a PayPal me account. Anything counts, a dollar counts, um, and would be much appreciated. Um, comment below, let me know what you thought of this, if there was anything that you didn't understand. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And along the way, because this is going to be very long, I... Um, you guys feel free to fast forward if you already know this stuff, but I'm going to pause along the way and then restart so that I can kind of mix up paints and get things together. But the first thing I want to show you is my color. So just out of the bottle. Okay. So I was trying to use one that doesn't have a lot in it, but See how thick that one is? Let me grab one uh, apple barrel. That's how bad that is. I don't really have any apple barrel anymore. Okay. So, I'm going to grab a stick and show you the other. So this is my, see how soft and creamy that is? So that's the paint that I use for almost all my paintings along with this one, okay? So this is super runny and thin, okay? That's this one, that's this one. This one is super thick, like super duper thick, okay? So this one will need some more mixing, some more watering down, but man, that color's pretty. Okay, this last one, again, super runny, and you can actually see, this is a piece of watercolor paper, you can actually see the canvas below it. So not very pigmented and, you know, runny, okay? So these are all going to make a difference, and that was this one. So... Creamy and thick, thick, runny, runny. Okay, so that's the first part. So I'll get these out of the way. So next I'm gonna set up and show you what I mean by thinnest, thin, thicker, and thickest. So I'll be right back. Okay, you guys, I'm back. So. Here is my thinnest paint. So I took my, my paint and pouring medium that I had, okay? And uh, this is how I would make it from scratch, but I took it and I thinned it down with water and a little bit more pouring medium to get this, oops, sorry, not on camera, to get this consistency right here. See how it's just dripping straight back into there? So there's a couple ways that you can start getting consistent with your consistency <laughs> um, is to, so I use the surface method. So seeing if the paint sits on the surface, how long it stays on the surface. Um, so this is going immediately back down into the cup. The other way that you can do it is to take your stick, hold it up and see how long until the paint breaks. So like I'm gonna take it, hold it, paint's breaking right there. And then you can count how many seconds. So I know my thin paint breaks in one, two, three, four, okay? So that's one way to do it. So that's my thin paint. Sorry, my thinnest paint. My thin paint, let's see if you can see this one. I'm trying to get out of the light and let you guys see this. It's kind of difficult. This one still has... So it goes right back down into the cup, but you see how it, it's just a little bit, it dips into the surface there. Like maybe you could see one tiny little bit sitting on the surface. And so then for the drip test, one, two, see it starts breaking a little bit faster, right? So that's that one. My thicker paint, 
See how that sits on the surface? Of, oops, sits on the surface a little bit there. Let me go back to autofocus. There we go. Okay, so see how this sits on the surface there? I've got a little bit of a mound. See that drip right there and it sits before it dissipates? This is my consistency that I use for my ring pours and most of my pours. And then the last one is my starting medium that's pretty thick. And that's like kind of globby. See how that's like a globby paint? Almost as if it came out of the tube. Not really, but it's like a creamy consistency. Still runs. Okay, and a little bit thinner than this. I, I wanted to make it extra thick just to show you guys. But a little bit thinner than this is what I use for uh, my flip cups. So I'm going to pour them out and then I'm going to tilt the paper up and I'm going to let you see how they run. And that's a good indicator of consistency as well. Okay, so watch what happens as I tilt this paper up. Hope you guys saw that. This one took off running. This one, not as much. This one, definitely not as much. This one almost didn't move. So thickest, I would probably still water this one or put a little bit more pouring medium in this one, maybe a little bit more water just to make it a little bit runnier. I want this to come halfway down to here. But this is your consistency test. Go home and try this out and write it down and figure out how much pouring medium, how much water do I need to get these different consistencies, okay? So I hope you guys could see that. Let me see if I lifted it up like that. Okay, so I'll do this one more time right beside it and try to get it closer into the camera. Okay, so thinnest. and thin. So watch as this goes. So you see how those run at different consistencies? This is what you need to work on if you're having issues with your consistency. This thin, thinnest paint is going to mix together, like your whites are going to mix with your blues, your grays, and your, I mean, your blacks and your whites are going to mix. Complementary colors are going to mix to mud, um, you know, your yellow and your purple, your red and your green, your orange and your blue, and I'll do a little bit on that, I think, as well. Um, but you got to get this down, and I live in between these normally. My baster injection technique, I've been living here, but I haven't been loving the results that I've been getting, so I'm gonna probably live in between here for my baster injection. But going back to what I had on here, hopefully now you have a better idea of what I'm talking about when I say thicker, thin to thick, thin for each of these, okay? So look back at the beginning of the video and then keep this in mind if you're trying to work on it. Okay, so now I'll make some paints and I'll show you what happens with the different ones. Okay, so I'm back and I've mixed, I have green, yellow, orange, purple, red, and blue behind me. And I have poured two cups. So this is my thin. This is my thick. I've poured, layered them exactly the same. Blue, red, purple, orange, yellow, green. See how these, this is, I mixed them in between thick and thickest and thick and then thinnest and thin. So see how those sit on top of each other? See how these are all mixed together? So now I'll pour them out. I'm just gonna dirty pour. So I'm just gonna pour over the, let me get my gloves on. Okay. 
Okay, I had to get my gloves on. So here is a Dirty Pour Thin. Okay, so the purple took over. It's kind of cool. You see the cells coming through, but take a look down here. I purposefully use these colors. See how the mud started to happen right down here? So that is with thin, okay? But the cells that are popping up through there are actually really cool. Okay, here is, you guys see that? Yep, so here is thick. Here, more like a density pour, the cells are popping up through there because some of them fell to the bottom, some of them stayed on the top. See how much brighter these colors are? Now this was probably a little bit too thick because underneath here is another color, see that purple? So that red is actually sitting on top of that orange and purple, okay? But see how these colors, so this may be a little bit too thick. That's also an indicator when things are a little bit too thick for me is when the colors are sitting on top of each other and they get kind of a haze. But you see how bright these colors came out? They didn't mix together. So this is the thicker consistency. So if you're having problems with mud, if you're using colors that, ha that make mud, <laughs> okay? And I've mixed these together now a little bit. So, you know, those complementary colors, like I said, you mix them together enough, you're gonna get like this brownish baby poo color underneath, okay? Um, all right, so that's a dirty pour. I'll show you another one, hold on. Okay, again, here are my colors. These are mixed, these are the thin, these are the thick. So here's a ring pour with thin. See how it's already just kind of spewing off everywhere? I layered these all the same. So look guys, I actually like this design. I'm not saying to not do thin ring pours. They come out beautifully and you get cells that pop up. I've used no silicone in this. These are density cells that are popping up in here. Here is the ring pour with the thicker colors. Lower to come out. See inside that cup, it's really pretty. Slower to run. I maybe didn't have quite enough paint on this one. Okay, and again, maybe just a little bit too thick, but you can see the rings are much more pronounced. Take a look at the two of these. Let me show you this one up close. This is like a density pour, okay? There's no silicone in there. When you thin your paints out and you mix a bunch of colors together, that's what you get. It's a really cool effect. Nobody's saying don't do that, but if you're looking for something where your rings are staying true to their shape, 
that's more what you're looking for. That's the consistency you want. So neither is right or wrong. You just gotta figure out what do you want, right? Okay, so I'll come back with another. Okay, for this one I'll do a um, straw blow or something kind of like the blow dryer technique. Um, so I've got my paints. Here's my thicker white. Here's my thinner white, okay? For base coats, I almost always use in between, you know, I really use thin. That second one that ran kind of fast, but I've thinned this one down a little bit more so that you can see. So base coat of white, and this has some air bubbles I'll have to pop. And also if you're doing a technique like this where you're trying to blow it out, you're gonna want more paint on the canvas because you're gonna blow the paint off the canvas. So that's something else, don't be stingy with your paint. So here, see this is a little bit thicker consistency. So here, when we're doing blow dryer technique, I want thin. I like a thin consistency. And you'll see what happens. It's raining here, guys. Okay, so thin and thick. And again, this is a long video, but you guys asked for it, so just fast forward if you don't want to see any of it. Let me know what you think. Okay, I'm just popping the air bubbles there. So now let me take a couple colors. So I'm gonna do my thin on my thin. Oops, ooh, I almost put a thick in there. So these are all my thin colors. Let's see, what, see how those are running so fast? Now, pour a little bit of white around it, and then you blow. See how it creates that cool effect? So on blow dryer techniques, you want thinner paint. So here's my thicker paint. Let me see, I can't remember what colors I used to start out, but here's my green. Um, I have blue. Here's my thick blue. There's my thick yellow. And here's my thick purple. Okay. White around them. Blow it. So still pretty, but you don't get the same lacing effect. The paint just kind of sits where it is. Okay, so both still very beautiful. I'm probably gonna sell all these as coasters, but not the same effect. Thinner paint here for the blow dryer technique for density pours gives you this effect. This is a beautiful piece, but it's not the same, right? And some people I've been seeing are using even thicker white base paint, and you know the paint's not really moving at all. Okay, so that's that. Okay, and the last one's gonna be a flip cup. I have put, so this is thin, this is thick. I've put as close to a drop of spot on treadmill as I could get into each color, except the white. I'll let those sit for a second. So I hope this is helping you, you guys, because consistency is very important, and I like each of the photo or each of the little coasters that I've done, the little tiles that I've done, they're just different. So when you're saying, oh, I'm not getting the right consistency or all my paintings are horrible, maybe they're not, maybe they're beautiful, but if it's, I think it's just not what you're going for in your mind. So, take this one off. See how the cells are forming immediately in here? 
those will all be gone, I know, immediately. If, if small, tiny little cells don't form, I almost want no cells to form on my flip cup at the beginning. So then you can tilt, and as you tilt, you see, almost all the cells are gone. And you end up with kind of this muddy thing, right? Here's this one. And then let me just wipe my hands off a little bit. So I've got some tiny little cells forming. I have a couple blobs in there as well. But then I'm gonna hit this and you see all these tiny little cells form. And as those tiny little cells form, that's when I'm gonna be able to kind of stretch those out. Oh, I'm losing my blue over the side. So this may have even been just a little bit too thick. And I stretched that pretty fast so my cells didn't stay round. But, but you guys get the idea, right? So it's not that one's, you know, better or worse than the other. They're just different. Okay, I think that's all I've got in me tonight. I'm gonna set them all over here to the side and then I'll go through them again, so. Okay, you guys, I'm back over to show you the difference in the pores. So this side over here is the thicker side. This is the thinner side. So here is the first dirty pore. A ton of cells popped up from density. I think I feel like I'm in the light. This one was, all the colors stayed pretty true. This was the ring pour, you see how the rings stayed together. This is the ring pour, a lot of lacing that happened in the thin. This is the one that was blown with air. Now you can see, I think already, because my white's breaking, that that was too thin. The white was too thin in there, okay? But I still like the way that that looks, actually. It's beautiful. This one was the one where the colors were thicker. There's a flip cup. There's the flip cup with the thinner colors. So you guys can see the difference in the consistencies. I encourage you, play around with them on your own. If my mixture doesn't work, find somebody else's mixture that works. Make up your own, figure out what works. If you guys have any questions about this, please let me know. Um, please comment below if you like the video or let me know if you wanna see anything else or if you're having trouble with anything. I hope this helped you. Sorry it was so long. If you'd like to support me, my links are below in the description. And thank you guys. Happy painting.